What's up guys, welcome to Free Life Passion. In today's video I have a question from one of my Greek followers. Um, <laughs> his name is written in the Greek alphabet so I've got no idea how to pronounce his name or even generally <laughs> what it sounds like. But the question is, how deep should you be able to go with a mouthfill using a medium sized mask? And this person is running out of mouthfill at about 35 meters with a mask. There are a few different factors which will affect how deep your mouthfill will go. Um, and I'll talk about each one of these individually now. So the first one that I'm going to mention is how deep you actually take the mouthfill. The deeper you take the fill, the longer that mouthfill is going to last. This is the main reason, reason that deep divers use packing. Packing extra air inside of your lungs allows you to take your mouthfill deeper and therefore the mouthfill is going to last longer. The second factor would be how much air you can actually hold in your cheeks with your mouth fill. Again, it's quite obvious, the more air you have in your mouth fill, the longer that mouth fill is then going to last. And you can actually train yourself to be able to handle more and more air inside of your cheeks without having the urge to swallow it or feeling um, quite uncomfortable. A third factor which will affect how deep you can use your mouth fill too is how little air you can manage and still be able to equalize with that amount of air. Now when you first take your mouth fill, you're going to have cheeks full of air. But then pretty soon as you're descending, that air is going to compress. At some point, you're not going to have much air in your mouth at all. But you'll still be able to, with practice and training, be able to equalize with this small amount of air. The less and less air you can equalize with, the deeper you're going to be able to go. This requires quite a bit of training and sensitivity. The fourth factor is your mask, and we can split that into two different categories. One would be how compressible your mask is. So the more it can compress, the longer you can go about having to equalize this mask. And with the most flexible masks, um, like the Sphera, you can equalize it before you take your mouth fill and then not have to equalize it again um, until you reach the bottom of your dive. This is kind of ideal because you don't need to waste any of your mouth fill on your mask. If you have a less compressible mask and you need to actually use your mouth fill to equalize the mask, then you're losing really a lot of air. The second factor in relation to your mask would be the volume of your mask. So obviously the bigger your mask, the more air you're gonna have to use to equalize that mask. Now, every time you equalize your mask before you take your mouth fill, that's going to, be a, that's going to affect your failure depth, so how long you'll be able to take your mouth fill until. And then once you've took your mouth fill, then each time you need to refill the mask, it's gonna use more and more air from your mouth fill, which means you, you'll be able to go less deep because you don't have as much air for your ears. The fifth factor which will affect how deep you can go would be the management of your air and your glottis control, all these types of things. So if you tend to swallow air, then obviously that's going to reduce the maximum depth that you can go to and you need to work on your glottis control, soft palate control, and just general awareness of your mouth fill. So just to give you an idea of how deep you should be able to go with a mask, Last year I was doing um, 70 meters quite comfortably, 100% of the time um, with a mask. It was quite a large volume mask for free diving, the Mores Star, and I wasn't using any packing for these dives. Um, to go more extreme, last um, this summer I saw Stavros Kisunakis. He did 100 meters with a um, Falcon mask, which is quite a, a compressible mask. And the best I've heard of is Martin Stepanek who did 120 meters with a um, Sphera. Now both of these guys packed and both of these guys are like mutants. So you don't need to get too stressed out about doing 100 meters with your mouth fill. But from this information, we can deduce that yes, okay, you've got a problem. You're probably swallowing some air or doing something wrong because you should be able to go much deeper than 35 meters with a mouth fill. So some advice I can give you is just to do, do your dry training, man. If you only practice mouth fill when you're actually diving, that's only a very small amount of time to learn a new skill. If you also practice that dry each day, you're just increasing the amount of time you're practicing the skill. So obviously this, you're gonna learn this skill much sooner. Make sure that you fill the mask before taking your mouth fill. When you are actually equalizing, make sure you're only using enough pressure to equalize your ears. Any extra pressure is gonna make you more likely to swallow air. 
If mouthfeel and progression and depth is really important to you, then I would seriously consider just using a nose clip and getting rid of the mask. A nose clip is going to feel weird for the first few dives, maybe even for the first few dive sessions, but you do get used to it quite quickly. And it gets rid of all these complications of having to equalize your mask um, and losing air to the mask. Um, a lot of people will say, yeah, but I want to see where I'm going. Um, yeah, that's true. But you also get some benefits from using a nose clip, which you wouldn't get from a mask. And for me, I find my dives with a nose clip to be much more relaxing. All right, that's it, guys. Um, if you want to come see me for coaching, I'm in Dahab right now. I'm offering month-long mentorships or minimum of a week for coaching. You can go to the website for more information about that. If you want to pick up a cool t-shirt, there's a link for that in the description. And until next time, guys, take it easy and dive safe.